Hello and welcome to ElectroNerds Academy. In this video, we'll delve into the Arduino Serial Library. But first, let's clarify what an Arduino library is all about. When we mention an Arduino library, we're referring to pre-written code created by individuals or groups, packaged to perform specific tasks, such as controlling an LED, rotating a servo motor, or displaying text on an LCD screen. In our case, we're interested in a library that handles serial communication. Luckily, the Arduino IDE comes equipped with such a library called the Serial Library. This library contains a variety of essential functions, including several common ones that we'll explore in this video. Let's start our journey with the serial.begin function. This function sets the transmission speed, also known as baud rate, in bits per second. Typically, it's used with a single parameter, specifying the desired baud rate for communication. These are some of the common baud rates used for serial communication. However, if the device you're communicating with requires a different baud rate, you can specify it in this function. Just ensure that the baud rate is consistent between the sender and the receiver. Additionally, the serial.begin function allows us to configure the number of data bits, type of parity, and the number of stop bits using a second parameter. Valid values for this parameter include the data length followed by N, E, or O letters, indicating no parity, even parity, or odd parity, and finally, the number of stop bits. If you omit this parameter, the default data packet consists of eight data bits, no parity bits, and a single stop bit. If you are having trouble understanding these concepts, then watch our previous video where we explain serial communication in detail. The next function we are going to look at is the serial.available function. This function returns the numerical count of the remaining bytes in the serial receive buffer. We had introduced the concept of the serial receive buffer in the previous video. It is basically a temporary storage area that can accommodate up to 64 bytes of received data. Imagine we want to send the word hello serially to our Arduino. This word will be broken into individual characters H, E, L, L, and O. These characters will then be converted into their respective ASCII values. What are ASCII values, you may ask? So in a nutshell, ASCII is a standard data encoding format where we assign numerical values to characters, whether they are letters, numerals, punctuation marks, and other characters commonly used in computing. Here's a chart displaying the ASCII values of various printable characters. From this chart, we can determine the ASCII values of H, E, L, and O. Now that our characters are converted into their respective ASCII values, they are further converted into binary digits and sent to our Arduino. The USART on the Arduino reassembles groups of eight bits into their ASCII values, which are then stored in the serial receive buffer. So the receive buffer doesn't store characters directly, it holds their ASCII numerical equivalents. Now, if we call the serial.available function, it will check how many bytes are currently stored in the buffer. Since we have sent five characters, it returns five, indicating that five bytes representing the ASCII values of H, E, L, L, and O are available for reading. The next function we are going to look at is the serial.print function. This function facilitates sending data from our Arduino to a connected computer or other serial devices via the RX and TX pins. Typically, this function takes a single parameter, the data to be sent to the connected serial device. Whole numbers can be printed by simply specifying the number or the variable holding that number. For floating point numbers, the default behavior is to print two decimal places. For example, if we send the number 3.141592, only 3.14 will be printed on the serial port. However, if we want to send the complete number, we can utilize the optional second parameter. For floating numbers or variables of the float data type, this parameter specifies the number of decimal places to use. Adding six as the second parameter will print the complete number up to six decimal places. For integer numbers or variables of the integer data type, the second parameter specifies the base format. For instance, if we want to print the number 48 in binary format, we use bin as the second parameter. Similarly, OCT represents octal format, hex stands for hexadecimal, and dec is the default format for decimal. If the second parameter is not used, all numeric values are printed in decimal format. Characters and string values can also be printed on the serial port. 
Characters are enclosed in single quotation marks while strings are enclosed in double quotation marks. Variables holding these data types can be sent in a similar fashion as those of integer or float data types. The next function we will discuss is a variant of the serial.print function called serial.println function. Unlike the print function, println function automatically adds a new line at the end of its output, mimicking the action of pressing the Enter key in a word processor. For example, when we print the same data using both functions, the print statements on the left print their respective data on the same line, whereas on the right, each println statement prints the data and adds a new line so that the next statement will be printed on a new line. Despite this distinction, both functions can accept the same arguments. Now that we know how to send data from our Arduino to any serial device, let's delve into the process of receiving the serial data on our Arduino. To achieve this, we'll utilize the serial.read function. As we know that any data sent serially to our Arduino is stored in the serial receive buffer. The serial.read function reads the first available byte from the receive buffer, returns its integer representation, and subsequently removes that byte from the buffer. So if we send the letter A to our Arduino, its ASCII value will be stored in the serial receive buffer. And if we call the serial.read function, it will read the first byte, return it, which can be stored in an integer variable, and once the byte is read, it will be removed from the buffer. Now, let's explore some examples. In the first example, we'll send a single character to our Arduino and display it on the serial monitor. The serial monitor is a built-in feature of the Arduino IDE that enables real-time communication between the computer and our Arduino board using serial communication. It acts as a virtual terminal, allowing data to be sent and received, making it an essential tool for debugging and testing Arduino programs. To open the serial monitor, first connect your Arduino to the computer, then click on the button in the top right corner of the IDE. A new window will pop up. Here we'll find a text box where we input data to send from our PC to Arduino. The large white area displays any data sent from Arduino to the PC. When we send data using the print or print line function, it appears in this large white area of the serial monitor. A drop-down menu allows you to set the baud rate, which must match the one defined in your sketch. Another drop-down menu lets you choose a terminating character for transmitted messages, such as a new line, carriage return, both or no line ending. For now, we'll leave it as no line ending. At the top left of the serial monitor window, there's a button to clear the display, followed by a button to enable timestamps before the received data. Next to it, there's an option to activate auto-scrolling, ensuring the latest data remains visible. Now, let's close the serial monitor and start writing our program. First, we declare an integer variable named data to store the incoming data from the serial receive buffer. In the setup section, we initialize serial communication by calling serial.begin 9600, setting the baud rate to 9600 bits per second. This function is placed in the setup since it only needs to be executed once. In the loop section, we will first check if there's data present in the serial receive buffer. For this, we use an if statement, and in the condition of the if statement, we are checking whether the return value of the serial.available function is greater than zero. If it is, then there is some data present in the serial receive buffer to be read. So we will read these bytes using the serial.read function and save its output in the data variable, which we had declared initially. Next, we will simply print this variable on the serial monitor using the serial.println function. Now let's upload this code to our Arduino, and after a successful upload, we will open the serial monitor and enter a single character, let's say A, in the text box and hit Enter. We can see that the ASCII value of the character A is printed on the monitor. But wouldn't it be great if we print the actual character instead of its ASCII value? For this, we will have to convert the integer value returned by the serial.read function into a character value, which can be done by simply assigning the returned integer value to a char variable, and the Arduino will automatically convert this integer value into its corresponding character and store it in the data variable. So we simply have to change the data type of the data variable from int to char. Now let's upload this modified code to our Arduino, 
and after a successful upload, we will open the serial monitor and again send the same character A. This time, the letter A is printed on the serial monitor. In the next example, we'll explore how to send entire words or even sentences to our Arduino and display them on the serial monitor. If we send the word hello using our current code, we'll notice that the individual letters H, E, L, L, and O are printed on the serial monitor. This happens because the serial.read function can only read one byte at a time from the serial receive buffer. So when the loop runs for the first time, the if condition evaluates as true since there are five bytes in the buffer. The first byte, representing H, is read, converted, stored in the data variable, and printed on the serial monitor. On the next iteration of the loop, the if condition is again evaluated as true since four bytes still remain in the serial buffer, the next byte, representing E, is read, converted, and the data variable is overwritten, meaning the previous value is replaced with this new value, which is then printed on the serial monitor. This process continues until all bytes are read and the buffer is empty. So to reconstruct the complete string from these individual letters, we will first declare a string variable called message. Then in the loop function, after we have read the character using the serial.read function, we will append this character value to our message variable using the addition operator as shown. This process of appending characters to our string variable is known as concatenation. Here we aren't limited to just characters. We can also append numbers, floating point values, or even other strings using the addition operator. So when the loop is run for the first time, the first byte is read, the value of the message variable, initially empty, will be concatenated with the character H. In the next iteration of the loop, the second byte is read, the character E is added to the message variable, and its value becomes HE, and so on. Step by step, our string gets reconstructed into its original form. Now we will print this message variable instead of the data variable. At this point, the code might seem ready for upload, but there's a crucial issue. Can you spot it? The problem is that we're printing the message variable at each iteration of the loop, so the variable gets printed progressively. First H will be printed, then HE, then HEL, and so on. Instead, what we want is to print the message variable once after it's fully reconstructed. To fix this, we need to add a terminating character each time when we send data to our Arduino. As discussed earlier, we can add this terminating character in the serial monitors window. We can select the type of terminating character we want to use from the drop-down menu. Let's set it to new line character so that every message we send will be automatically terminated with backslash n representing new line character, signaling that the full message has been received. Now let's modify our code to handle this behavior correctly. We will place an if-else statement inside our main if statement, and the condition of the if statement will be to check whether the read byte is a new line character or not. If it is, that means we've received the entire message. At this point, we print the message variable and then reset it by assigning an empty string so that it's ready for the next input. If the received byte is not a new line character, we simply concatenate it to the message variable, allowing the string to be built character by character. Now, let's upload the modified program to our Arduino and open the serial monitor. We must ensure that the new line character is selected as the terminating character in the drop-down menu. Once done, we will send the word hello. We should see the complete string printed in one go, instead of individual characters appearing separately. Similarly, we can send multiple words like hello world, and the entire phrase will be displayed correctly. In the next example, we will send numbers to our Arduino and display them on the serial monitor. With our current code, we can already send numbers, but they are stored as strings rather than integers. This means we cannot perform arithmetic operations on them like we would with integer variables. To fix this, we will use the serial.parseInt function instead of serial.read function. This function scans the incoming serial data, extracts the first valid integer, and returns it to be stored in a variable of the int data type. For instance, if we send the string shown here, serial.parseInt will ignore all leading non-numeric characters, read 1, 2, 3, and stop as soon as it encounters a non-numeric character, x in this case. 
Since it stops reading at the first non-numeric character after a number, the trailing 12 will be ignored. Now let's modify our code to use serial.parsint. First, we will remove both the string and character variable declarations and instead declare an integer variable named number. In the loop section, we remove all the code and keep only the main if statement that checks if there are bytes available in the serial buffer. Then in the body of the if statement, we will use the serial.parseInt function and store the returned extracted integer value in the number variable. Finally, we print this number to the serial monitor. After uploading the updated code to our Arduino, we open the serial monitor and send the number 489. The Arduino will successfully print this number. That's all for this video. For more such content, visit our channel and check out our website for in-depth tutorials and code. The link is in the description. Finally, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.